good news. We have another episode in the Azure Enablement Show as part of the Well Architected series. This time, we're doing a deep dive with Tanuja about cost optimization. I hope you'll join us. Welcome to the Azure Enablement Show, where we'll be discussing the challenges you and other tech-savvy customers have encountered. Together, we're going to be talking with experts to find out how they think about these problems, recommended tools and best practices, and tips they've learned from years of experience that you can use. So today, we're going to be diving deeper into Azure cost optimization. And to do that, um, and to pick up where we left off in the last video, I have to move back over to being a customer. Ah, OK, much better. So last time I was talking to Dante about my cost optimization situation, where the CFO would come in to my office and said that she was concerned about our Azure spend and was concerned uh, about the new things we we're going to be launching into Azure. And so Dante helped me with some of the some of the, the basics of this sort of stuff. But he recommended I talk to uh, my colleague, Tanuja. Uh, Tanuja, I'm hoping that we can talk about the situation I'm in if you're up for it. Hi, David. Yeah, absolutely. We can talk about it. Um, so I kind of got to know where to start and how do I talk to people about this? Um, I also want to show you um, the architecture I'm working with to see if you have any thoughts about it and, and let me know like where to even begin. So is it OK if I just show you um, what my architecture looks like? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, that will um, you know help us uh, decide what, what route we want to go. OK, great. So this architecture is uh, not that sophisticated. It's a, it's a multi-region architecture where I basically have a bunch of VMs uh, serving different, different portions of things, and there's an on-prem component. So nothing I, I think nothing totally wild. Um, and I'm hoping you have any suggestions about where do I start when I'm thinking about this sort of stuff. So David, this architectural diagram um, looks really widely used type of scenarios. This is what we see uh, most common a deployment of Azure um, with VPN and all that, um, you know, multi-region deployments. Now, before we delve into this architectural design and look further into it, what I'd like you to do is tell me if you know what your advisor score is. Do you happen to know that? I, I do. Uh, I'm, it, it, it's a little something, but I'm happy. I'm happy to share it with you, and I'm curious to know why 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 you want to know. But okay, I'll, I'll admit to you that it's it's somewhere between forty three and forty five when I last looked at it earlier this week. Oh, okay. Well, David, that's you know that happens, uh, but that only means that we have uh, plenty of opportunity to improve here, to improvise, and optimize. And that's why we're here, right? To talk about how we optimize and how can we save um, cost. Um, and that's the major concern, correct? Right. So David, there are a couple of ways to take care of the cost concerns that you currently have. There are two approaches. One is technical and the other is strategic. Uh, the technical approach basically goes into low-hanging fruits, how do we immediate, how do we immediately um, save money by either you know, reducing the waste? And that falls into three different categories that I will cover with you in a minute. Uh, the second is Azure Advisor. We have built this uh, really great tool for your use that actually displays all the possible recommendations for you um, that could save you uh, a lot of money. Um, and then uh, our biggest recommendation is uh, uh, reserve instances. So these are technical approaches, which is basically doing something immediately to save money and then come back and think about your long-term um, strategic approach, which is saying, how do we sustain this immediate savings that we got for the long-term approach. That's how we're going to, um, you know, that's how we tackle the cost-related issues. So, so that makes perfect sense to me. Can we dig into the waste thing a little bit? Absolutely. You bring up a good point. So for reducing the waste, we are covering two different, uh, three different components of uh, reducing waste. 
Number one is most commonly the customers that we've done the cost optimization engagement with um, are either having a boatload of uh, underutilized VMs or they have unattached disks. Now, unattached disks, when they're not being used, are going to incur cost and you're paying for something that you're not using. And that is the, you know, against the philosophy of Azure. Azure is basically pay for what you use. So anything that's not being used is basically a waste. So we show you, uh, you know, uh, uh, ways of doing, um, finding this unattached disk, ways to find the underutilized or unused resources. And then we show you how to um, remove them and stop those um, uh, resources from collecting expenses for you. So let's use that. Let's use this as an example, this unattached disk thing. Uh, like how hard is it to figure out whether I have unattached disks? Sure, it's, it's really relatively simple. Let me show you, let me jump right into it for you. Here is the example of a PowerShell script that we have created. When you run this, when you uh, basically you could uh, do it from here if you wanted to, if you click on the try it button here, uh, this is in our Azure um, docs uh, and available to everyone. If you click on try it button here, if you're logged into your Azure portal, it is going to open up the CLI, which is basically a tool to run PowerShell scripts or PowerShell commands. Um, but if you don't have it and you just wanted to understand how this is going to work, you could actually copy this to your clipboard uh, from here and then go into your Azure portal or your uh, CLI or your PowerShell um, uh, commandlet and then paste this and run it. Okay. One of the thing that you wanna make sure when you run this is uh, make sure you tell it that um, you are looking for certain subscriptions. Um, within that subscription, you're looking for um, managed, so the managed disks and unmanaged disks are um, queried differently. So you wanna make sure that you are uh, querying the right uh, piece of it. So this commandlet right here will actually go grab all the um, unattached disks, meaning they have no virtual machine tied to them. Another key point is uh, this value here, one. So you want to always run this commandlet with the value of one. What that means is that anything that it finds this, this script, it doesn't delete it. So this is only to find, but let's say you found them and you found say hundreds of them and you wanna delete them, then you can change this value to zero and that will allow you to delete everything that you found. So um, uh, careful when you run this command. So okay. what I showed you here is uh, managed disk and the same goes for unmanaged disk. If you scroll down a little bit on this doc, you'll see the same uh, script here and uh, you could run this for unmanaged disk, which is basically referring to classic portal. Does that help, David? Yeah, yeah, totally. That that totally that gives me just a sense that like this isn't as hard as I thought. Like I can I could just copy and paste from our from the docs and we'd yeah. be in good shape. Yes. So that is uh, covering the um, uh, unattached disk. The other way of reducing your waste is. Um, talking about your advisor um, recommendation. Okay. So I know that you're familiar with this advisor already because you were able to give me your advisor score. Um, so this can't be really, really um, new to you, but this is where we really publish every possibility, all the recommendation of your cost savings across the five pillars. Uh, I am sure you're uh, you know, familiar with our uh, well-architected framework, and these five pillars are under our well-architected framework. So any advice, any recommendations we give you are um, based on these five pillars. So drilling down into cost optimization, um, it, you know, here on the left side, I can actually just click on this and it will drill down 
to uh, where it can start telling me how Azure Advisor is, um, you know, pointing out how do I um, do this um, reducing the waste portion of it. So here you can see it says um, how to optimize your virtual machine. There is a clear guidance here. How is uh, Azure Advisor calculating uh, the waste or underutilized resources um, and so on and so forth. So this is basically your, you know, kind of a, a um, roadmap, if you will, and, and guiding principles um, to look into what is being recommended through um, Azure Advisor. And going back to the overview, I will also, I'd like to show you the um, screen where it really dr drills down into each recommendation, like right here. Um, it also, you know, ad the advisor also shows you the impact, uh, the description, what exactly, what resource um, is it uh, referring to, and so on and so forth. So this is something you should take, uh, you know, into account. Uh, another thing that uh, it represents is um, a quick uh, way to save money. When you reduce um, the machine size skews, or you shut down the underutilized uh, VMs, uh, you're going to start seeing the savings. Cool. So that, that's getting me closer. That's cl definitely getting me closer to the to the the things that I will make my CFO happy. Um, mm -hmm. Other stuff along those lines that I could be doing. You could be also looking into the um, uh, recommendation um, from the um, reserve instances. Okay. So for reserve instances, what we do is um, we highly recommend that uh, go into our uh, advisor again and drill down into each of the recommendation. And then those recommendations tell you, here's a recommended SKU. And um, what we're saying in this screenshot here is that you're currently using a standard DS2 V2 in central US region. This is a virtual machine being used. What we're saying is that you know, um, if you buy a reserve instance for three years for something that is a long-term workload, then you could be saving uh, X amount of money. Now, if I drill down into this details, it will exactly give me the um, details of what SKU family I should be using to save those costs. Now, to simplify this, there are other means, other tools. So I won't drill down into this right now, but I'm going to show you different ways of, um, you know, drilling down and finding what exactly should you be using. Okay, so I get that advisor can show me a lot of things, but it seems like uh, looking at all the advisor recommendations for all the stuff I have and all the subscriptions is going to be a bit, uh, is, is going to take a while. Is there any tools that we have that makes this easier to look at things more sort of uh, broadly and more all up? Absolutely, David. Uh, great question. Um, so since we've been really uh, trying to be the trusted advisor for all our um, customers, uh, we have built this tool called um, Azure Cost Management Tool. It's a Power BI template app. So in other words, it's a template built-in template uh, that collects all the data that we've been talking about so far. Um, you know, it kind of bubbles it up for you, showing you in a very, um, you know, clear, concise way uh, with reports and charts. And it tells you, you know, what needs to be done or where you can um, uh, identify the opportunities to optimize and start saving money. And um, as you can see on this um, screen I'm sharing with you, uh, this is our uh, Azure Cost Management Power BI app. And um, to kind of, you know, describe this, um, on the left side of the screen, you will see all the listed reports that this tool generates. So the things you have to do, David, is uh, make sure you have EA admin read permission, and then um, you download the uh, Power BI app. Once you download it and run it, it is going to do all of the work behind the scene. Um, depending on the subscriptions you have, uh, it may take a little bit, 
but eventually when it's finished, this is what it's going to populate. So the, everything that you see on the left side of the screen here is a result of the app and it generates this report for you. And um, because I left off on the uh, recommended approach for um, reserved instances, uh, let me show you how detailed this uh, report gets and how you can know what reserved instances, instances to buy. That would be great. So here I clicked on this um, report. It's called VMRI coverage, shared recommendations. So as you know, um, virtual machine reserve instances uh, are in two different categories. You can buy them as shared or you can buy them for single instance. Right now, we'll just talk about the um, shared recommendation. So let's dig into this. As you can see, there are a couple of charts and a table in this um, report. So looking at this chart, the left side of the chart is showing me that currently uh, my subscriptions are using X amount of CPU hours. So in, uh, for example, FS V2 series is using 0.37 million CPU hours, okay? Okay. Same here, um, DSV2, these are the SKUs that are currently you have bought and are in production and they're consuming cost. And the amount of CPU hours they're consuming is displayed here. Now on the right side of this chart, on the right side of this chart, you'll see that there is a graph again representing the same type of data. What this is saying is the solid dark blue graph line that you're seeing is the amount of reserve instances are in use currently by you, meaning this is what you've bought. And mm -hmm. the light blue section is what's saying that, hey, you can save all this blue section here, this amount of money um, uh, instead of paying on demand, you can pay less by consuming more RIs. So we're showing you this difference between what you currently use and what you're paying on demand. So on demand is always expensive and RIs are relatively cheaper, specifically if you buy them for uh, three years. And if you buy them for three years, they're substantially cheaper. Um, in fact, up to 60, 60 to 80% cheaper, right? So this graph is a really a money slide that really reflects the usage of your current Azure um, services. So in this one, you are seeing that um, you're not really optimized in buying the reserve instances. Now, once we've known these um, graphs, Let's look at the table that really is the um, you know, uh, crux of it all. Here, it um, breaks it down for you, tells you what you are currently using, in what location, in what region. It also, this table includes the SKUs that are in use. And then based on the last seven days of your usage, this recommendation says, um, hey, I think that based on the usage of um, this particular SKU, uh, we definitely think that if you buy a three-year reserve instances um, in two quantities, then you would be saving um, a lot of money. So this is our recommendation to you. And then if you wanted to see what the current savings are and then map that back, to your recommendation, you can also go back to a report for RI savings right here, okay? So currently it's showing you you're saving 1.98K um, and that's what that recommendation is for. So on top of this 1.98K, if you bought three years worth of RIs, uh, you could be saving um, additional money. This that's is also significant money uh, that I, uh, you know, uh, this, I mean, I think this is great. Um, I'm just a little concerned that I'm not going to have e-admin 
available to me when I want to run this. Um, I don't know if that happens a lot, but um, I'm wondering if we could talk about like what I do if I don't. My only concern is I know we're basically out of time to talk today, and I'm wondering if you'd be willing to if we could pick that up, that question up. Like, what do I do if I don't have that that access to run this um, uh, next time? Would you be up for that? Absolutely, David. Uh, and we have uh, means to um, you know cover for um, instances where uh, they can't share this data with us or um, there are data um, you know, regulation that prevents them from sharing this data um, with us. So we have uh, different tools to, um, or different ways to address that. Uh, so cool. let's, uh, let, yeah, let's continue this in uh, at another time. Cool, okay, so I'll look forward to talking to you later, which means it's probably time for me uh, to return to being a host. Okay, well, that was pretty cool. I think as a customer, I was able to get a, a handle on where to go around cost optimization. But now we have this question about what to do if I can't run that cool tool. And I'm hoping that you'll join us uh, for the next um, video in this series, where we'll pick up right with that. So thank you, Tanuja, for that. And thank you for watching. Look forward to talking to you a little bit later on.